Well, my name is Susan Holland. I'm the curator of the Ferret Gallery at the Library in Belleville, Ontario. Uh, this month we have two fabulous shows. Joan Levy Earle is uh, from Cornwall, Ontario, and we're celebrating 50 years of art and friendship with Joan in her retrospective show. And what that means is that it's a show of work throughout the years that she's been an artist, a working artist. So I'm not sure what the earliest work is, but it comes right up to the most recent painting that she did not too long ago, a couple of months ago. My name's Joan Levy Earl, and uh, I'm the artist here at the John Parrott Gallery. My show is a retrospective of celebrating 50 years of art and friendship, and it's called Dancing Brushes because years ago I was a baton twirling teacher and dance teacher, and so when I paint, I paint to music in, in the background, and um, I guess I, that was the reason I chose Dancing Brushes. It's a retrospective, so there's paintings here from the early 80s, um, 90s, um, 2000, and uh, then my most recent work. I was in Alaska this summer, and uh, so there's a couple of things from that trip. Uh, there are several ways that uh, we come together, the artist and the curator. Sometimes I find them at art shows or online, or um, most often though, they come and see the space. The gallery is a fabulous space. There's um, not really anything comparable and, until you hit, um, not even in Kingston, really. So probably between Montreal and Toronto, we are the best public gallery. We have three rooms plus the corridor and the foyer. So a lot of artists come here to see a show and then they decide, hey, wait a minute, this is really nice. So then they apply and there's an application process and. You know, we go through their proposals and look at their work and then decide what would work together and then we plan the shows for the year. It's a beautiful venue. I live in Cornwall, but when I came through about a year and a half ago with a friend who was having a show here, I couldn't believe the venue and, and the warmth of, of the people working here. And so I said, this is the perfect place to have my swan song show, my 50th anniversary show. I guess it's my vision. The artist drops off the work and uh, for the most part they allow me to decide how the show is going to look once it's up and lit and um, it's a trade secret. The, the contract is pretty clear that we can choose pieces that will not be placed in the show if we feel that's necessary but I haven't really eliminated too much. Only if an artist brings like 70 pieces and we have room for 40, obviously. But I really do try to get everything in. It's the artist's wish to have their work seen. So if we can show everything they bring, we do. Um, yeah, it's sort of done by color, size, what's pleasing to the eye, the overall effect. Um, the end result for me should be that it's a pleasing show to see for the eye. It should flow. You should be able to go through from painting to painting without being jarred. So that's really my goal when I'm hanging. Well, that was a difficult, yes, because I have about another 25 paintings at home. Um, I tried to have a, um, a variety for one thing. I paint in oils mostly. I do a few little watercolors and I also do a little bit of oil pastel. But I, um, I decided that I would have give a retrospective of some of the abstract work that I did as well as the impressionistic landscape. So I just, uh, I, it wasn't eeny, meeny, money mo, but almost. It was one painting that's here is called uh, The Soaring Spirit, and it was part of a show that I did at the Palais des Congrès in Montreal years ago, and it was something I, I did a series based on André Gagnon's music. In fact, I did get a chance to meet André Gagnon, and he did see the paintings. I didn't get him to sign them, though. It should have been done. I should have done that. I didn't think ahead. But the, this one painting, The Soaring Spirit, was done in 1984, and it was the only one of that series I still had. And it wasn't framed. It was sitting behind my bedroom door, and it, one day I woke up and I said, gee, I think, um, I think this painting really wants to come to Belleville. So it was the last one I decided to, to um, put in the show, and, it, and people like it, so that, I guess I was inspired. Actually, it doesn't take a long time. I think, um, I think more than anything, it, it's something that comes on an impulse, and there's not a lot of color in it. There's mostly blues, and uh, it's it's almost instantaneous. You do something like that usually in one sitting or one you know one day. You just do it, 
And then the hardest thing is not to touch it the next day and change it because, you know, it has to be what it is. I like doing both, but as I get older, it's more and more difficult. I stand when I paint, and with arthritis, it gets more and more difficult to do that. So I've been writing quite a bit more the last few years, and my, my next project after this show is to work on a biography of Wallace Havelock Robb. He was the Abbey of Abbey Don, he called himself in Kingston. He died in 76, but I met him years ago when I was 16, and he was from Belleville. He was born here, and um, the Burroughs family, um, he, he married Edna Burroughs from Belleville. Anyway, Wallace Havelock Robb should be studied in high schools. His work is all about the indigenous people. And he wrote Thunderbird, Tecumthe, all of these books. So I promised him when I was 16, I was gonna write, let the world know about him. And it was a big promise, but it's 50, over 50 years later, I'm finally going to, uh, going to fulfill that and I the, all his papers are at Queens so and I have access to them so it'll be a labor of love it'll probably take a couple of years but I'm quite excited and and that was another reason for choosing Belleville I lived here a couple of years back in the late 59 60 and uh, it's just a wonderful town and I have a lot of friends in Toronto and in Cornwall and Kingston so it was perfect you know they could each take their time and come here sort of halfway <laughs> but it's a great venue. I love this gallery. I have a website, joanlevyearl.com, and uh, so it's, you know, they can send a contact that way or they could call the gallery and the gallery would give them my personal email.